Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the stages of the Krebs cycle. Over the last two videos we've looked at glycolysis and the link reaction. And you should watch those videos before you watch this one. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm and does not require oxygen. In glycolysis a molecule of glucose is converted into two molecules of pyruvate. We also make a net yield of two ATP molecules and two molecules of reduced NAD. Now if oxygen is absent then the pyruvate remains in the cytoplasm and undergoes anaerobic respiration. However in the presence of oxygen the pyruvate is actively transported into the mitochondrial matrix. In the matrix the pyruvate takes part in the link reaction. During the link reaction each pyruvate forms one molecule of acetyl coenzyme A, one molecule of reduced NAD and one molecule of carbon dioxide. And you need to remember that the link reaction occurs twice per molecule of glucose entering respiration. Okay now before we go any further I want to take stock of the carbon atoms. Glucose has six carbon atoms which I'm showing in blue. In the link reaction two of those carbon atoms have left as carbon dioxide. The remaining four carbon atoms are now in the two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A. There is still a great deal of stored energy left in these molecules. So now the acetyl coenzyme A enters the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. Now we can divide the Krebs cycle into two main stages. You need to learn the first stage exactly as I describe it. In the first stage the acetyl coenzyme A reacts with a four carbon molecule called oxaloacetate. The two carbon part of acetyl coenzyme A moves onto the oxaloacetate. This creates the six carbon molecule citrate. At the same time the coenzyme A is released and goes back to take part in the link reaction. During the second stage of the Krebs cycle a whole series of chemical reactions take place. Make sure you learn the processes and the products. First a decarboxylation reaction releases one molecule of carbon dioxide and a dehydrogenation reaction produces a molecule of reduced NAD. We now have a five carbon molecule. Okay now another dehydrogenation reaction takes place producing one molecule of reduced NAD and another decarboxylation takes place producing one molecule of carbon dioxide. One molecule of ATP is also produced during the Krebs cycle. This is produced by substrate level phosphorylation which we saw in the video on ATP. Finally we have two more dehydrogenation reactions. These produce one molecule of reduced FAD and one molecule of reduced NAD. The coenzyme FAD is a hydrogen carrier similar to NAD. Okay now a key idea you need to understand is that during these reactions we regenerate our starting molecule the four carbon oxaloacetate. This is really important as this allows the Krebs cycle to continue again. Okay so when the Krebs cycle operates once we make one molecule of ATP, three molecules of reduced NAD and one molecule of reduced FAD. We also release two molecules of carbon dioxide. Now you need to remember that one glucose molecule forms two pyruvate molecules in glycolysis. So per glucose the link reaction produces two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A. This means that the Krebs cycle operates twice for each glucose molecule that enters respiration. One final point to remember is that the Krebs cycle does not require oxygen. Okay now you'll notice that so far in respiration we've made several molecules of reduced hydrogen carriers. In the next stage of respiration these reduced hydrogen carriers are used to produce ATP. This is called oxidative phosphorylation and we'll look at that in the next video. 